and welcome to Paula Armstrong Ceramics. So today I thought I would make a paint pot bowl, just a, a little small one, kind of cereal bowl kind of size, but I would change it up a little and put some coral reef inspired designs on it and textures. So I hope you like it. Okay, so we're going to start by making a pinch pot bowl, a nice simple one. I'm going to just cut the top, maybe a third off the top of this, and take that away. And I'm going to use this for doing the decorations, um, for adding the extra texture on for the coral later on. So I've got the rest of the ball of clay that I started with and I'm just going to pop it in the palm of my non-dominant hand and then use the pad of my thumb and press into the centre quite firmly so that I can go down till the thickness at the bottom of the clay is possibly I'd say probably five or six millimetres thick and then we're going to tilt it up and use the pad of my thumb again and press to the outside edge and turn slightly and press again and keep turning like this and pressing until I have almost like a daisy pattern of thumbprints on the inside of the bowl. So I'm just going to go around and press the pad of my thumb until we get like a daisy pattern showing like that on the inside of the bowl shape. I'm then going to smooth, use it still using the pad of my thumb and making sure that I'm pressing against the palm of my hand, trying not to press against my fingers. Um, just because it will put finger marks into the outside of the clay if you press against just your fingers and it gives me something that I have to tidy later whereas uh, if I keep against the palm of my hand it stays quite smooth on the outside. Now smoothing with the pad of my thumb helps neaten and tidy on the inside but it also helps even out the thickness of the clay within the bowl. And the key with pinch pots is to do it a little at a time. So don't try and go too fast, don't try and rush. You want to do it a bit at a time. Once I've got that nice kind of round bowl shape, I'm going to pinch, well, kind of stroke and pinch the edges so that I flare, thin and flare out this top edge of the bowl a little bit. It's going to give me quite ragged edges, but as I'm doing a coral bowl, I'm not worried about ragged edges because I think it will look good for the reef. I'm also not worried about um, having pinch marks from my fingers around the edge because again I think that adds texture. Um, but you can see how this is starting to flare the top of the bowl out. It's a bit more of a bowl shape. The thinner you pinch the clay, the bigger
picture of the bowl, but be careful that you don't pinch so much that it flares open and you end up with more of a plate than a plate. Now that I have my bowl, I'm going to add a little bit of rocky texture as my background. And I've got a lovely pumice stone that I found on a beach a few years back. And it puts some fabulous textures and marks into the clay. this on both sides because I really like the idea of the outside having the same kind of texture as the inside. When I'm pressing it in it is slightly flaring um, and stretching the edge of the clay a bit more as well, so I might have to uh, slightly alter the bowl shape again to make it a little more upright, if I want. You might like the shape that it turns to, in which case, definitely keep it. There we go, so that's my background sort of texture. I think I'm going to use this side here to put the main coral decoration on. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more texture so it goes down a bit further into the bowl on that side. So I have some pictures of coral that I've just printed off that I'm going to use as kind of an idea of the kind of um, textures and the things that I'm going to add to the pot um, to give just, just that kind of impression of coral. Um, I quite like I quite like this this one that looks a little bit like um, fungi or fungus, like mushrooms on a tree, um, as well as kind of the more traditional styles of branch coral and those kinds of textures. So I'm going to use some slip. Um, I'm going to put a bit of a stone, like a bouldery shape. So I'm going to build out a little. Um, just up here. Put lots of slip on to fill in the textures that I've made with the pumice stone. Uh, add another one. More. also um, to make sure they're pressed and stuck. Just give a bit more. Um, add quite a big piece just in on the bottom there.
just gives me a bit of a rocky shelf as well to work with. So then I'm going to start adding in some of the coral textures. So for the mushroomy one, I'm going to cut off. Round shapes. So Some slightly different sizes, some smaller than the others. So I'm gonna got the fronts are rounded, but I've also rounded the back slightly so that they each one will sit into and stick into the bowl shape that's obviously rounded as well. So let's core the back edges that are going to stick to the bowl. in place first if you want to decide on the composition of the pieces um, or you can do as I'm doing and just put them in place as you go. Depends how much, how confident you feel with the positioning. Make sure you support the bowl behind as you're pressing everything in. And as I press down, I give a bit of a wiggle just to make sure everything is stuck. to do a bit of the branch coral so I'm going to make some little coils especially from the bits of clay that I've trimmed off so that I don't have to uh, wedge them back up
Now I'd like this to have a little bit of texture on it. So I'm going to use um, just a plastic pointy tool and put a whole bunch of marks in pressing the end. So I've got the dots in the surface. It's going to stick onto the bowl. Um, so you could leave one side blank. Um, unless you're thinking you might stick a piece so that it's away from the bowl. Although that does give you a piece that's vulnerable to breaking after the piece is fired. And look very good. I'll do that to all of them. The little ones, I think I'll put the textures on once it's in place. So I quite like the way this tall branchy one is in the background of that one. So I am going to do the same and pop it over here so it's behind. And it's not quite like a tree, it doesn't go upwards. I've just noticed looking at the that I need to put things at a bit of an angle. Again, slip in place, press and wiggle. longer than the edge of the bowl as well. Right, let's put a few branches on. Always supporting behind. to start joining and moulding the edges in at the bottom here so that it all blends in and all the joins look like it's one piece of coral rather than lots of pieces together. Okay. Oh yeah, so I've got a bit of the branch coral at the back there. Now the next one I thought about was kind of brain coral and this one's a little bit mm, trickier um, but I'm going to start with a nice flat piece in the kind of shape um, where I'd like to put the coral I think. I'm going to go there. So I'm 
Sitting at the surface. sure that I haven't trapped any air behind with the slip. And then I'm going to use my point to draw in a continuous line of squiggles. So it just all goes around. Yeah. Okay. I've got all the little endy bits. If you've got lots of loose bits of clay, you can clear as many off as you can, but you can just leave them to dry and then. They should dry before the rest of the clay, so they'll pull. Um, you'll be able to just dust them off with a brush. Um, I wonder, I'm going to do another little bit of frame coral, because I think I want to put a piece just there as well. And I'm going to try this one, doing it actually here. On the table so I've got something much firmer I can press against to put the pattern in. Um. I need to make, the only thing with doing it this way is I need to make sure it's the shape um, that it needs to be so that I can just stick it straight in without pressing down on it or I'll lose everything that I draw on anyway because I press it down to stick it. Bit of a bean kind of shape this one. does mean I get a lot more of the bits of clay coming out. You can use a needle tool for something like this as well, which will give you finer lines than I'm getting. is a little bit deeper. 
with this one. And I quite like that it's got raised edges um, on it because I've gone a little bit deeper. So let's pop that one in. Score on the bottom. And this one I'm going to slip here on the bottom of it as well as where I'm going to position it in the bowl. I think this needs another one of the branch corals over this side just to finish this off so I'm going to do some more of that. I'm going to stick it on first and then put the patterns on it. the coral bowl all finished. So I will use some oxides and some glazing to put some lovely colours in this, maybe some under glazes, um, so that I get some nice bright colours um, showing with this bowl. Um, and I quite like the idea of the oxides to bring out some of the textures. So um, I will post a picture of the finished piece up on my social media and put a, a link to it in the comments once it's there. So I hope you liked it, um, I hope you enjoy making one of your own and I will be back again with another video soon.